हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल दिपेंदु सर्स क्लास सो टुडे आई एम गोन रीस्टार्ट आई एम गोन कंटिन्यू विद अ टॉपिक दैट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड लास्ट इन माय लास्ट वीडियो इट इज रिप्रोडक्शन इन ऑर्गेनिज्म एंड माय लास्ट टॉपिक वाज फिशन दैट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड सेक्सुअल रिप्रोडक्शन फिशन पार्ट सो टुडे विल बी कंटिन्यूइंग from the uh, next uh, reproductive you know uh, process but uh, before to before uh, to start with getting to the topic uh, uh, let me tell you that uh, please see this uh, whole video uh, it will really help you a lot as well, specifically the students please see to the pen and copy so that you can note down the important things and uh, please do like and uh, share this video uh, with your friends so that everybody can be benefited and to subscribe it so that uh, you will get the notification for my next videos and definitely uh, your cooperation will encourage me okay so thank you so much let's start so as you see the reproduction in organism this was the last uh, uh, flow chart that uh, i drew that day okay so i was uh, explaining the fission part so plasmodium was the last today we will start with the budding and then we will be coming to the sporulation regeneration then we will do fragmentation okay parthenogenesis or some of i'll cover up the whole all the different types of asexual reproduction fine and uh, definitely uh, e regarding this discussion if you get some uh, doubt and all you can also you know uh, in my this youtube channel you can uh, ask your question also you can write down the questions okay <coughs> Now, today is budding. I'm gonna start with. So budding. The another name of budding is torulation. Okay. So now this is of two different types. Budding is of two different types. One is exogenous budding, and another is endogenous budding. okay so first of all this budding the bird the term came from the bird budding so the process of growth of the bud that is the budding process okay it is of two different types exogenous and endogenous budding now exo means exo it is means outer the growth is outside of the body it is called outgrowth okay it's a small outgrowth from the main parent body okay that is the exogenous growth for example let's take it as a hydra okay so this is an hydra here okay just a rough drawing and uh, this hydra that involves in budding mechanism budding process where i see the exogenous budding process so what happens is initially a small bud that grows so it is a small outgrowth from the main parent body okay and then as time goes the bud that grows get matured enough and you know uh, growing and then the time comes when okay this bud that matures into almost like the parent body okay and then it gets detached then it gets detached from the main parent body and it becomes a separate hydra okay so this is an example of exogenous budding hydra is an animal okay so exogenous budding we observed here so it's an outgrowth from the body then detaching from the parent body and uh, a new hydra that grows endogenous means inside obviously so endo that means inside the body the bud that grows inside the body okay for example as remember these examples please uh, do note these examples which are important endogenous we see any marine or fresh you know uh, sponges okay so marine or fresh water marine or fresh water sponges where we see we see endogenous budding mechanism okay so these buds are known as the buds are known as in case of this sponges gemmules 
okay so it is a sexual reproductive structure gemmules okay of sponges now how the gemmules look like okay <clears throat> Again, it's a, just a rough drawing. Details I am not going to draw, just to get an idea how the genules, you know, look like. Okay. Okay. These are the different spicules here. Okay, and this is the structure of a gemmule. Now, what happens is that when the birds, when this then then get this structure gets mature, automatically the birds are released out of the body. Okay, so this is what the gemmules, the budding mechanism, very simple. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Is the fragmentation, the smaller part? Let's cover it. Fragmentation. Fragmentation. As from the name itself, we can see it's a fragment. The main parent body that uh, cut into fragments, and this is an accidental process. Okay, if the main parent body that cut into pieces, okay, and then from each part of the body that grows, develop the new whole organism is going to develop. Okay, for example. Uh, Spirogyra is an algae where we see the fragmentation mechanism, or you can say that uh, rhizopus also, fungi, where we see the uh, fragmentation mechanism, bryophytes, for example, Rixia, then Marchantia are the examples. When I see the fragmentation mechanism, okay, if the main parent body that cut into pieces, small small fragments, and then from each fragment, the new whole body is going to develop. Okay, this is the fragmentation. Nothing much we have to know about this. Okay, this is uh, sufficient knowledge. Okay, for the board students particularly, I'll I'll be covering covering up the detail of these processes. Okay, when I start with the neat classes. So now. The next topic after fragmentation, it is the re. Uh, okay, one more is there. Sporulation. Let's talk about sporulation first. Then I'll go to the regeneration mechanism. Sporulation is what uh, spore. As you know from the name, the name reflects that it is talking about spores, formation of spores. Okay. So what is a spore? The spores are actually nothing but. Resistant asexual bodies, resistant asexual bodies with cyst wall. Okay, so cyst wall. It means that there is a tough covering. Okay, over the spores. Now, what is the function of this cyst? Okay. Cyst actually it protects. It protects the spore. It protects the spore from any unfavorable conditions, environmental conditions. Okay. So and also what happens is that within the cyst the spore keeps on developing, and when favorable environment comes back, suitable environment comes back, the cyst cracks, and the spores goes out. Okay, once the favorable condition returns, the spores goes out. By the time the spores get matured inside the structure, inside the wall of the cyst. Okay, so the cyst, what actually doing? It is not only helping in the sporulation, means a sexual reproduction mechanism, but also it is protecting the spores. Okay, from any uh, you know obstacles, environmental obstacles. It may be a, a extreme temperature or any any type of you know environmental uh, problems. It resists the spores from you know the, these these uh, problems. So this is sporulation, 
And one more impor uh, 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 important information is that this force which are releasing out in the environment, okay, if they land, okay, on some you know, swampy, swamp areas or damp or moist areas, if they land on some damp or moist surface, it may be a soil surface, it may be a wooden surface, it may be like for example uh, moist uh, uh, stem bark, stem of a plant, okay, if it lands on any moist or damp surface, this force, okay, it will develop, it will develop into a new whole organism. Understood? So, this is the sporulation mechanism. And let's, let's move on. Okay, the concept of spore is important because uh, the next, uh, we are going to study some of the topics where the concept of spore is going to help us a lot. Okay, haplontic life cycle and all, we will be discussing this. Now, next is re- uh, Okay, uh, I just forgot one thing. Uh, the spores, I'm going to give you some examples that you have to uh, know. For example, there are different kinds of spores. One is zoo spore. Different types of zoo spores are there. Zoo spores are uh, found in Clematomonas, Clematomonas, Clematomonas. Okay. Uh, also, you will get in. Uh, uh, Eulothrix, okay, Eulothrix, then Sporangiospores, Sporangiospores, there are all different types of spores. This is found in Rhizobus, then Conidia is another spore, it is found in yeast, that is Penicillium, for example, okay. So, these are some of the examples of the, you know, the, the sporulation, the spores which are found in different organisms, okay. They involve these, these, these organisms which are involved in the, you know, uh, sporulation, a sexual mode of reproduction. Fine. Next is regeneration. This is also very, very important uh, a sexual reproductive mechanism. Regeneration is of only two different types. One is reparative regeneration and another is restorative regeneration. Okay? Reparative regeneration as the name reflects repair. Its function is to repair. Okay? To repair repair what repair or repair any injured part of the body okay maybe due to some accidental case okay uh, some part of the body get cut or injured so that part needs to be repaired okay so this mechanism that helps in repairing any part of the body and uh, this kind of reparative regeneration uh, observed in all types of living organisms we can say Okay, like in starfish, in starfish any part of the body it get cut or injured, it can regrow that part. Okay, so that is the reparative and this is found in any living organism, in our body also. Okay, if any part of the body is cut or injured, okay, that part is repaired. It can be observed in any plant also. If any part, if you cut the any any small branch or any branch of the of the plant or tree, okay, it will automatically develop, repair. So it is repairing that injured part. So this mode is observed in almost all living organisms. Restorative regeneration, okay. Restorative, it is restoring. It is restore, restore the whole new body. Okay, if the body gets cut into pieces. Okay, the from each fragment, the whole new body is going to going to develop. For example, planaria. So planaria is an example where I see restorative regeneration. Okay, restorative regeneration. So each fragment of the body, species of the body, uh, is going to develop into a whole new organism. 
so this is basically i can say that that the reproduction mechanism the of reproducing the whole new body this is the in repairing the injured part of the body i think this uh, difference is clear okay now after regeneration i'm going to start the next uh, sexual reproductive mode that is parthenogenesis which is very very important parthenogenesis uh, maybe some of us uh, know the definition of this parthenogenesis parthenogenesis is a process or a mechanism where the organism you know giving rise to the gives rise to the new uh, 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 generation without the fertilization of the egg cell uh, without fertilization okay fertilization we know but the male gametes and female gamete fused or male gamete fused with the female gamete and give rise to the zygote or the embryo further okay that is the fertilization so in parthenogenesis uh, most of the you know organisms who uh, are you know who are capable enough to involve in sexual reproduction also okay they take undergo this kind of parthenogenesis mechanism if the environment is not suitable in unfavorable environment the parthenogenesis mechanism that takes place in those organism now where where what fertilization is not involved means see it may sound little contradictory i am going to uh, now clear it okay this parthenogenesis are where we see the Uh, sorry we see the production of gametes okay this is what i am discussing a sexual reproductive mode okay but in the beginning if we remember why we were discussing about the differences between asexual and sexual reproduction i have said that gametes are not produced in asexual reproduction or asexually reproducing organisms don't produce gametes gametes are only involved in the sexual reproduction but parthenogenesis is a process where gamete is involved okay it shows that okay these organisms undergo okay if not all obviously okay sometimes they undergo sexual mode of reproduction also if the environment is favorable for the sexual reproduction otherwise they will be undergoing they undergo this parthenogenesis mechanism so gametes are produced here okay now let's see this is of two different types parthenogenesis is of again two different types one is apomixis one is automixis okay apomixis and automixis now what is the difference if it is a diploid organism okay in apomixis the cell undergo mitosis cell division okay and it is going to produce the gamete which is also having the same set of chromosome means the it is having the full complement of chromosome okay as the parent has the full complement of chromosome the same the whole set of chromosome is present in the newly developed gamete or the cell okay because this is a mitosis and we know that mitosis is also known as what equational division each and every point is important for you to remember okay so that you can write the answers on your own language in the copy of examination you don't need to mark up the things if you understand this basic concepts okay so equational division means this if any cell undergoes mitosis okay the newly formed daughter cell will be having the same number of chromosome that is equational division mitosis okay now so apomixis the cells undergo mitosis new daughter cell having the twin so this is the gamete this is the gamete all the gametes having diploid number means same set of chromosome now that is why this is the reason that this gamete does not require fertilization okay this will be clear let's talk about the automixis also automixis where the cells undergo 
cells undergo meiosis cell division. Okay. In case of this, now you have to remember one thing that in mitosis two cells are produced here, and in meiosis I'm getting how many? One, two, three, four. Four different cells are going to produce, and they all will be having. Okay, let's take one cell is little larger in size, which is actually the egg cell. <clears throat> but all of them will be having the n number of chromosomes, that is half the number of chromosomes. Because meiosis, as you know, is also known as reductional division. Okay, so the chromosome number reduced to half. Okay. And they produce four new daughter cells, you know, four gametes. So, one large egg cell and the rest of the smaller cells. These smaller cells also known as polar bodies. Okay, and this is the egg cell. And this is the polar bodies. But all of them having the half the number of the chromosome. Okay, now see, the parent organism here is twelve. Okay, it means and now these daughter cells they are having n number of chromosomes. Now from here when the new next generation will be developed, they will must be having the two n number of chromosomes. But here I see n. So now what they do is that this egg cell get fused with any of the polar bodies. Once they get fused with any of the polar bodies, you see, automatically it becomes 2n, n plus n, 2n. 